Hey, hello, everybody, and welcome back to Security Matters. We're virtually from the Think Tech Hawaii studio today. And this, this episode is so much fun for me because this, I believe, is one of the uh, success stories that you're going to hear about that came during the COVID crisis when there are a lot of um, non-success stories, you might say. So the Women in Security Forum uh, started a scholarship campaign this year to award scholarships to some of our industry members for their continuing education. And this program was a, absolutely a resounding re success. And I've got a couple of the awardees with us today. And I've also got a member of our donor committee. And I've also got a member of our uh, awards um, a grading committee. And uh, this e effort was undertaken by all volunteers. And I wanna give a shout out in particular before we get started to Steve Antil of Brevo. Brevo was, not only were they a Ruby level donor to this program, but Steve also offers up his employees and their time to participate in the Women in Security Forum uh, committee efforts. And uh, these are not small efforts. So uh, Steve, if you're out there, thank you so much. And thanks again to Brevo. With that, let's get started and let's meet our awardees first, Holly Sansons with um, ADT Commercial. And uh, Holly, uh, welcome aboard. Give us, uh, give us your background as much as you sort of care to share with our audience today. Hey, thanks, Andrew. Um, yeah, so I'm Holly Sanson. I work for ADT Commercial as a marketing manager. Um, my role there is more focused on culture and recognition. Um, so just, you know, helping to really encourage um, a culture of appreciation, recognition, and um, hopefully retain our employees. You know, we um, are appreciative of them. And um, so we, we really try to build a culture that makes them want to stay. That's awesome. We definitely need you on our committee. We're working on that in the Women's Security Forum as well, those exact initiatives. Uh, our next awardee is Aaron Mann. Aaron's with the Legion Canada. Aaron, welcome aboard and congratulations on your award. Thanks so much. Hi, everyone. Really, uh, really thrilled to be here today. Um, I work for Legion Canada. I am a channel marketing manager um, and strategy manager for a multifamily channel up here. So. I focus on trends in the multifamily space and support our sales initiatives, um, going after some of the biggest multifamily markets in North America. So it is a, a fun and ever-changing job, but I'm loving it so far. Awesome. I'm glad you could join us from the great north. Um, our next guest, uh, Glorious uh, um, Salmaran, is also the chairman of our committee, and uh, she has put in undying hours. Thank you very much, Gloria, for being here today. And she chaired the grading side of this committee today. Gloria, how are you doing up there? I know we've had you on before. How are things going since we've uh, finally got these awards out the door? Oh. <laughs> We're so excited. Um, this, you know, this was the first year, as you mentioned, uh, that we did something like this. And we're just so proud. Um, we had, you know, a relatively small um, awards team, if you will, awards committee team. Um, and we were able to review, you know, all the applications that we got. Um, and, you know, this is the first year and we were so excited to um, be able to offer or to award 12 um, scholarships this year. And that's thanks to our donor, um, our donors and, um, and our donation team as well, our fundraising team, um, you know, for reaching out to donors. Um, I know it was an especially uh, difficult time to ask for money um, for something like this, but um, yeah, but it's been, it's been incredible. Incredible journey for sure. Awesome. Thanks. And so finally from that donor side of the house, Nicole Kopazuski is with us this morning, also from Brevo. Uh, Nicole, we started off with a pretty modest goal. I think it was $30,000 and I think we raised way more than that. So you must've been working really hard. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Andrew. So when, when we initially started off, and that was our goal, and then COVID hit, what were you thinking about our ability to raise donations? And by the way, this was an all donated uh, fund campaign. So there wasn't a started off with zero dollars, you might say. Yeah, asking for donations during a global pandemic, it's definitely not a small challenge. <laughs> by any means. Um, however, it's because of the amazing people in this industry that we were able to make this a success. The companies and the people who contributed are recognized as leaders in this movement. It's really a way for companies to show their commitment 
by helping to shape the future of the industry and the next generation of leaders by focusing on career development. So this was, you know, not a small task, as you mentioned. Um, however, this was just an amazing success despite COVID and everything we had stacked up against us. So. Awesome. Thanks so much. I know how hard you worked on it. Um, so to our awardees, when had, uh, first of all, were you uh, Women in Security Forum members prior or how did the scholarship opportunity sort of get on your radar? Because I know from the working side of it, our perspective, um, Don Erickson sort of, we just said, hey, we want to do a scholarship this year. He goes, okay, but you got to get it done in 60 days. So we were all like, what? Oh my gosh, like, how are you going to do it that fast? And uh, so how, when did it get on your radar and how did you go through the criteria and decided something you could apply for. And Holly, we'll go back to you uh, first. Um, so I was encouraged to join Women in Security Forum by my supervisor who felt that um, her employees should just be more involved. Uh, so I, I accidentally came across the scholarship opportunity um, on uh, the page whenever I was, was joining. Um, so I just went ahead and took a chance. Uh, I've been wanting to go back to school to get my MBA anyway, and um, it seemed like a really good opportunity to just basically jump on that right away. Um, so yeah, it was kind of accidental, uh, but super, super thrilled that I was awarded and super thankful to be a part of Women in Security Forum. It's been amazing so far and, and being a part of the subcommittee of outreach and education. I mean, that's just, I've met so many, so many new people, and um, I already had an idea of the culture of the security industry, but um, widening my horizons and meeting people from all over within this industry has really confirmed that it is a, a very collaborative one and supportive one. That's awesome. Founded by, I love it. It was accidental. That's so good. So we drew you in, and then we drew you in further. Hey, Aaron, oh, yes. um, how, uh, so how did you come across uh, the scholarship um, uh, application and what were your thoughts when you first looked into it? Was it like something that was appealing or did it seem daunting? I, I, I didn't fill one out myself, so I don't know. It was, I think a little bit of both. So I'm pretty involved with SIA from the RISE perspective, which is their young okay. professionals group. Um, I've been on the committee for about a year and a half and that was kind of my first push into getting more involved with the industry, which I've loved. And I had won a RISE scholarship in 2018. So I had known that SIA occasionally did have scholarships for, you know, any number of opportunities. What caught my eye about the Women in Security Forum, and I had started being involved because I had started building kind of a relationship with Maureen Carlo, who is really uh, an integrated part of, of the Women in Security Forum. Um, and when I saw that the funds could be used towards student loan repayment, that was the kind of hook for me um, because I'm not actually in a place where I'm actively trying to do something, go to a conference or go back to school or anything like that. Um, but knowing that there's a lot of people in my position who have student loans from undergrad, um, it was just kind of like a, I don't know, should I apply? Should I not apply? And I went back and forth for a couple of weeks and I sent in my application on the last day actually um, because wow. I, I had been contemplating for a while, you know, my undergrad has nothing to do with kind of what I'm doing in the security industry now, but it was kind of my gateway to, to get into my first position with Legion four years ago. So um, yeah, student loan repayment was huge and being able just to, to actually apply those funds to my loans and see that burden taken off of me was a huge and liberating feeling. So an opportunity that doesn't present itself often, but one I was very happy to take advantage of. That's so awesome. Gloria, do you remember how we came up with the idea to repay, allow student loan repayment? Was that Maureen or I forget who brought that up in the committee, but what a great idea and a fairly unique yeah. idea, I think, for a scholarship award. Yeah, um, I'm not exactly sure. I think by the time the idea got to me, it was a no brainer. We, yeah, we're absolutely doing that. Um, but it, it is a great idea and it, it did make our scholarship actually stand out from some of the other ones that SIA does offer. And that was something that we wanted to make sure that we highlighted in the application process. Um, we wanted to make sure that everyone saw that because it's, yeah, it's such a fantastic um, benefit that, you know, very few scholarships offer, so. 
Yeah. And especially during COVID, I know, mm-hmm. Nicole, we talked about this quite a bit. Like, how do we, how do we offer that? How do we get more donors because of this sort of unique selling proposition of our scholarship? Um, when you talked to um, what we call prospective donors, um, were they open to that? Um, did that, did that help you think sway some of them? I guess I could ask. I think so. I mean, at first it, I was a little concerned that folks were going to be a little tight with, you know, donating money, especially during the time of uncertainty that we had, but it, you know, the power of being able to invest in our future leaders and to really invest in the industry, which I know all of us in the call, we, we we're pretty passionate about. So, you know, it's, it's a way to make our industry stronger. It's a way to invest in the next future, uh, future generation of leaders. Um, so the opportunity is priceless when you think about it at the end of the day. I mean, you know, a few hundred dollars, a few thousand dollars, you know, you can't compare that to the development of our future leaders. And also really just getting the word out there that, you know, this group of women, which are, you know, typically very underrepresented in our industry, you know, it's a way to promote that and raise awareness because, you know, women and minorities, they make our industry stronger at the end of the day. And that's important for our future as an industry as a whole. Yeah, and I don't, I don't know if I mentioned, but our donations did all come from WISF members, not just SIA members. So that was what was, that was another one of the, the things that we our starting mantra for where will we get these donations as well. We have like 400, I think 500, I'm not sure how many members we have now in, in the WISF, but uh, 400 or so when we started. So um, there was some right pickings. I mean, I remember trying to promote that idea. And I remember people kind of being shocked, like, really, you're going to pay for someone's exi- old student loans, like any kind of student loans? I'm like, well, yeah, if it was used for education, you know, it's valuable because they're, they're here, they're, they're in our industry. Um, cool stuff. Uh, let's, um, let's, let's, we got a couple of minutes before the break. So let's take a quick look at, uh, with our awardees, what, um, what do you think the future offers you um, in the way of a career uh, in, inside of our industry? Um, and I'll leave it sort of an open-ended question in that way. Um, you know, if you could, if you could um, pluck some job that you've seen someone doing out of the thin air and say, that's going to be my job, uh, what would that look like? And uh, Holly, we'll go back to you for that. Um, for me, I'm kind of already doing what I really want to nice. do. Nice. Awesome. Yeah. Yes. Um, I, I kind of, again, accidentally stumbled into culture and, and, um, and now a little bit of diversity and inclusion as well, um, and love it. I, I realized what my passion is. I've kind of always felt like I don't know if I really love marketing. Sometimes I love it. Sometimes I hated it. Sometimes I just wasn't sure. Um, so <laughs> I, um, I do, I do love culture. I think that my goal in, in, you know, pursuing, continuing my education is just to get more overall business experience so that I can be in a leadership role. Um, but still maintaining in the, in the culture or diversity um, part of this industry. That's awesome. So my argument is if you've made it on this show, you're already a leader in this industry. <laughs> Aaron, uh, yeah. so what, so what, what, um, what, uh, what, what do you think about your, your future in the industry? You've mentioned you've been four years at Legion. I wasn't sure if you were somewhere before that, but what is, um, Legion's huge. I mean, obviously a lot of growth opportunity there. And I, I should, maybe that was a loaded question. I don't want you guys jumping outside of your, your company, your boss is like, where the hell do you think you're going? So sorry about that. Um, but if, um, if, if, uh, if the role goes up, what does that look like to you? Gosh, I have my sights set in a couple different directions. I am, I'm lucky that I work for Legion. I've loved working for Legion for the past four years. I could see myself staying with the company if the stars align for the long haul. Um, I really enjoy the security industry and kind of, I've been in marketing and customer experience positions for the last four years. But the more that I've gotten involved with the industry, the more my obsession with people has come to the forefront of my career. And so doing things like professional development and promoting different opportunities towards individuals and helping people reach their full potential is I think where I want to go in the long term. Um, I saw a job posting for some company that, that was called a happiness coordinator. And I think that that would be my ideal title is really focusing on kind of what Holly said, the, the culture of the company looking at how we can make people um, kind of be the best versions of themselves, come to work, do the things that they love, 
Um, because for me, if we're spending 40 plus hours a week doing something, it's not worth it if you're not enjoying it. So if I can play some role in making sure a company is bringing the right people to the office, giving them the resources they need to do their job and enjoying it, that would be, that would be my ideal role. I love it. It's kind of like internally focused marketing of the people, right? And marketing to the people and building the culture. I'm sure Gloria is going to have some advice for that after the break. We are going to pay some bills because uh, we can't do this for free. So we'll be back in one minute. Stick around. Aloha, and we're back. And y'all know I don't shut up, so I'm going to shut up so we can get back to our guests. All right. So Aaron teed us up with sort of that working on internal, um, you know, uh, the, the, the people, you know, keeping our people happy, working on building them up. And, and obviously, this scholarship was designed to help do that, help promote folks within the industry. Um, Gloria, you know, you uh, sit on a big HR engine over there. Um, is that component that seeps into sort of your world as well or is that how how does how does culture building get done let me just throw that question out there Ooh, uh well that is definitely a um you know a company-wide effort uh while it is hr who kind of helps kind of guide that effort it is you know everyone's job to you know to be to contribute to the culture of the company um, I know Erin talked a little bit about uh, professional development uh, in her last comment, and I will say, I mean, not that this is a plug for Brevo, but um, that's something that we do, we do, um, we believe in developing our staff, and I think that does, you know, make people happier, um, you know, when you, when you invest in their learning, when you invest in their growth, um, it makes people happier because they're able to advance um, within the company or if the opportunities are just not there at, you know, at our company, then we're happy to see them go and uh, you know, go to bigger and greater things. Um, but yeah, it is, it is everyone's job to contribute to culture. Um, it's certainly something that we're always working on improving. Um, you know, it's, it's a, it's one of those ongoing things uh, that you always have to invest time in. Um, so yeah, it's, it's very important. And we do need happy, what is it? Uh, happy makers? Uh, <laughs> Happiness coordinators. Yeah, <laughs> Happiness, Happiness officers. Yes, we do need that. Um, I 100% I, I agree. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Well, I don't know if the, so like it, it, it tends to, everybody tends to look at leadership, right? Like leaderships are supposed to cultivate this downstream thing and, and everyone's a leader in their work org. So we, we do hear this put out, but leaders also have P&Ls and other things to drive, right? So there's, there's always that, that performance component of happiness, right? Because you're, hopefully you're very happy performing at your highest level to, to help the company achieve its earnings uh, goals, right? So that sort of thing. And sometimes those can be, that can be stressful. Um, I think the focus on, you know, growing uh, practices for people to help them deal with, with stress, obviously during COVID, I mean, it's been a whole change of focus, mm -hmm. I think, for everyone. So it's a happiness officer is a, one of those great jobs. If you fail at it, I wonder what that means. That was the only thought <laughs> that comes to my mind. Like, I was a happiness officer over there, but I'm gone now. And I'm going to go be the happiness officer over there. So I, I don't know. Uh, maybe if everybody follows you, then that's, that's the right thing. Hard to say. Um, so, uh, Gloria, I know you want to talk a little about the grading process, and I'm not sure what, um, you know, what, you were, what you were thinking there, how that went. I know uh, I didn't have visibility on it, so I'd love to hear uh, 
what your thoughts were of, of the applicants or whatever you'd like to share with us about that. Yeah, so I wanted to share that, um, you know, first, again, my gratitude, obviously, um, to the fundraising team and also the donors. Um, we never thought that we would ever get to award 12 scholarships. Um, so that was significant for us. Uh, it, it's way more than we ever thought possible. So, and I know when, you know, you and I spoke earlier, you know, and, you know, when we were starting this out, we were like, oh, if we get, you know, five, that, you know, that would be great. Um, but we, we <laughs> definitely exceeded that. Uh, so I, I wanted to say that uh, we were very impressed by all the applicants um, who applied to the scholarship. Um, I know that we we did ask, um, you know, for some questions on, uh, you know, what inspires you? How do you, how, we, how will you advance the, the uh, security industry? And everyone had great answers. So um, we were basically, it was just very difficult uh, <laughs> to grade some of these because we got such great applications. Um, and again, like very impressed. We actually got to learn a lot about people's journeys, um, you know, in their careers, but also in life, um, you know, what we heard, sorry, not heard, but like read stories about, um, you know, what inspired people to kind of go this path or the path that they picked. And I just, uh, it was very meaningful, uh, rewarding. Um, and, you know, I, I certainly see that in my day job, um, being in HR, uh, well, we see everything in HR, but um, you know, but reading these types of applications um, and what people will do with uh, with the award um, and or how this will help them advance, um, it was just so meaningful. Um, and everyone on the committee who was grading these, um, you know, felt the same way. They all were just it was it was difficult. <laughs> um, so I can't wait for next year uh, wow. when we get to do this again um, and we have you know three times the applications and we're reading through all these stories. Um, I feel like it does certainly let us, um, it helps us get to know the people um, who are gonna grow the industry with us. Um, so I was very excited to do that. Yeah, you know, it, it brings to mind, maybe we need to lean on Don and I don't know if, I don't know if there's privacy issues with this, but maybe all those ideas for growth that, and those, uh, those ideas that they expressed in those applications, could be abound into a compendium of ideas for industry growth mm -hmm. or that we could bring inside of the uh, women's security forum as you know here here's the things we're hearing from our applicants about what we need or what's lacking or what's missing or what they want to do that's an awesome source of information i'd even consider yeah i will say too that um even though it was the women in security forum scholarship um men were also able to apply for the scholarship um, we didn't get any men who applied for the scholarship, but um, to Nicole's point from earlier in, you know, in the conversation here, um, we've discovered that women have great ideas for growing the industry. So we need women in this industry. So whatever we can do to uh, make sure that this scholarship is, you know, front and center that every woman that's in our industry is thinking about this scholarship as an opportunity um, or that they just know about the WISF um, and are part of it. Uh, we have great ideas to bring to the table. So we need to be heard also. Um, so yeah, I look forward to that. That's awesome. Yeah, I agree a hundred percent. Nicole did. Um, uh, so I know, I know brief Steve underneath Steve Rio is a, a good company, a great company. You probably get a lot of, um, great motivation and great leadership over there. Did, um, when you were reaching out to these companies, were any of them surprised that we had taken this on? Did you get any feedback? Like, you're going to do what? You're giving the who? Like, uh, I, I, didn't, I don't know. I know, we, I know we may have talked about that a bit before, but I just don't recall the conversations about any of the difficulties you may have experienced. Yeah, there was a lot of, but it's COVID, you know? Um, so <laughs> yes, we're still going to ask for donations because it doesn't matter what's going on in the world. We still need to advance our industry. We still need to advance you know, when women, all of our future leaders. So, you know, I'm really hoping that now that this is, you know, a real thing and we're going to be doing this next year, that we can get the world out early and, and really build up not only the number of applicants, but the number of funds that we can award to applicants. So, you know, put that as a plug, you know, everyone get ready. We're going to be calling you because um, we're going to look to do, you know, twice as much, if not more next year. 
So I think, you know, the success that we had despite everything is a true testament to our industry and the amazing people in our industry. But it's, it's important now more than ever to make these investments and encourage folks to continue to grow their careers because the security industry is an amazing place to be. It's an amazing place to work. And now more than ever in the world that we live in, it's, it's in a very important industry to, to really help grow and nurture. So I'm excited for next year. I'm, I'm hoping we, we crush the records and, and we do twice, if not more than what we did this year. That's awesome. Yeah, and I, I, do, I love the fact that security is just top of mind across all governments. All, every, everyone in the world today is paying a lot more attention to security. And, and hopefully our industry is getting more visibility because that in the national security discussion in some places where we weren't all, all, always considered. Um, so I want to go back to our awardees. Um, maybe a couple of your final thoughts on um, or, or motivations for others to apply or just whatever you'd like to share with our audience. We've got a couple of minutes left. Uh, Holly, we'll start with you. Uh, take the chance, Aaron. I would have told you that had I known you were considering and, and known you now, I know you, but take that chance. It doesn't hurt. If you see an opportunity, um, just, you know, try it. And um, the only thing it can do is, is improve you. Um, you might not get awarded, but, um, you know, you'll, you'll meet people, you'll um, get practice with applying for things like this, um, and also just show up overall. And Erin, you mentioned uh, Maureen. I, I talked to her and she kind of um, put the plug in of show up. And so I use that all the time now, just show up in the industry and great things, you know, are bound to happen. Awesome. Thanks. Yeah, Maureen's our president and she is one amazing force. I love Maureen. Erin, uh, your final thoughts uh, or do you like to share with our audience? I, I completely agree with Holly. Take the chance. Apply for it. There's no reason not to if you have an opportunity to just go out and get it because not everyone has these opportunities so who are we to waste them but kind of like holly said it'll help you build your network it'll help you make some really impactful connections with people in the industry and it might introduce you to to someone or something that you never thought about um, that can really help advance your career even if you you win or you don't um, but when you get to where you're going, extend the hand behind you to help someone follow in your path, because that's, that's the only reason we're doing any of this. So that would be my advice and my call to action. Awesome. Love that call to action. I really appreciate all of you joining me today. Um, it was a little quick. I know it was a short sort of short, hey, can you jump on an episode? So thank you. This was the first of many. I'm going to try to get all of our awardees on. Um, the rest of our committee members on uh, over the coming months. So thanks again for joining me today. I hope you all have a great rest of the week. Aloha from Hawaii. Take care, everybody.